Let's get back to the jobs number. As you know, more jobs than expected in August, marking some resiliency for the labor market despite rising rates. Uh, payrolls up 187. However, unemployment at 38 is interesting. That's the highest since February of 22. Let's bring in Lael Brainerd, a National Economic Council Director for the first reaction from the White House to the jobs number. Lael, it's great to have you. Thanks for the time. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Uh, is is 38 uh, the most important number in this print? Absolutely not. I think what we see is a picture of a strong labor market. If you look at the number of people coming into the labor market, it's really encouraging. Uh, and so that number is just a reflection of uh, an, a great uh, jump in participation in the labor force. I think that reflects the good economy and the really terrific jobs that people now have access to. How, do you, how high do you think uh, participation can get, uh, given the curveballs that the pandemic threw at us? Well, you know, a lot of people said that we were not going to see uh, workers coming back, but they've come back in record numbers. I mean, you see that in the increase in employment in August. That is President Biden's good economy, good jobs. Uh, good wages. People are coming back and going to work, and the economy is much more resilient, much more balanced. Uh, we're seeing that balance in the labor market, and that's why inflation has come down. So it's a, it's a good outlook overall. Lael, how are you thinking about uh, the role of unions in the current jobs environment? We were talking about the potential adjustments that could be made as a result of the yellow bankruptcy, which stemmed in part due to union negotiations, obviously the, the strikes that are also uh, currently ongoing in Hollywood and beyond. Uh, how do you think about that as um, a, a factor in the overall unemployment situation? So there's always special factors that are taken into account in the flows that you see month to month. So clearly those uh, items are special factors. But, you know, we're also celebrating uh, the successful collective bargaining agreement that was reached uh, it, between the ILWU and the uh, West Coast Ports that was ratified with overwhelming support. So generally speaking, um, again, it's just a, it's a healthy jobs market with uh, good jobs. And uh, wages are uh, growing uh, faster than inflation, so people are feeling good about uh, their real incomes. Yeah, Lael, in fact, I wanted to, to get your thoughts on the wage growth. Of course, Wall Street Logic had a lot of attention on the, uh, the pace of wage gains, 4.3% on a 12-month basis, slight moderation in growth from the prior month. What is your current thinking on wage growth, its role in driving overall uh, inflation for consumers? You mentioned we have positive real wage growth, but there's a lot of folks who say, you know, maybe we're going to have to do more to moderate wage growth if, in fact, the Fed needs to get uh, inflation down to its target. Yeah, you know, I just don't see that. People did say uh, that you weren't going to see inflation coming down absent a really big uh, increase in unemployment, and yet inflation in the latest report, the three month, is back down to pre-pandemic levels. Um, and it's really uh, closely tracked uh, that supply chains index. Meanwhile, the labor force uh, participation has uh, increased much more than people thought. You're seeing balance in the labor market and a continued strong economy under the policies that President Biden has put in place. Lil, as you look externally beyond the United States, uh, there have been some pretty clear issues with China. Um, some of your peers from the White House have been um, going over there recently. Uh, how concerned are you that some of the weakness that we are experiencing or that they're experiencing in China uh, could have a broader effect here in the U.S.? And is there anything that you're working to do to moderate that? Well, look, I think uh, Secretary Raimondo had good meetings, Secretary Yellen before that. Uh, it's good to see those channels of communication uh, opening back up. Secretary Blinken initiated those series of meetings. Uh, and that's important because we, uh, we really need to be in ongoing contact with our Chinese uh, counterparts. That said, China faces some really daunting economic challenges. And of course, that matters uh, for countries in the region. Uh, the U.S. Uh, is, uh, I think, quite resilient. Uh, and again, we've seen the really good increase in people coming into the labor force, the resilient job market here, um, the uh, greater uh, reductions in inflation here. So I think the U.S. itself 
is on a really strong economic course, uh, better growth, lower inflation than any of its peers. But of course, uh, China does have some challenges and we're watching those. Well, I hope I could get you on energy for a moment. We were talking about oil a moment ago, uh, close to 85 today on West Texas. We know what retail gasoline has done going into the winter blend. Um, is there a sense that if if gasoline really were to start to pressure the consumer going in, into an election year, that the administration would look to make further moves on the SPR or anything else? Well, it's certainly the case that um, gas prices, especially on this Labor Day weekend, matter a lot for American households. We all know that uh, it matters in terms of how much money they have left at the end of the month. Um, and so we keep a very close eye on that. As you know, the president uh, took very strong actions when uh, prices at the pump spiked earlier. They've come down uh, very substantially. But we're going to keep our eyes on those gas prices uh, because they do matter so much for American families. Lou, I have to ask you about uh, the potential for a government shutdown because we are now in September. Uh, there's the potential for the government to essentially run out of money by the end of the month here. Um, there were headlines this morning about a fresh request from the White House to pass a short-term measure to avert a shutdown. How far apart are the two sides at this current juncture? Let me just say uh, there is absolutely no grounds uh, for uh, a shutdown. You know, the president engaged in good faith in both um, the Senate and the House passed on a bipartisan basis um, the Fiscal Responsibility Act. So, you know, it would be good to see. Uh, we are seeing it on the Senate side, the appropriation process working really well. Uh, that said, it's extremely important to keep the government funded as uh, the uh, Congress works through uh, their uh, appropriations process. Uh, so we will uh, continue to send that message.